All right. Word ought to be coming up any second. All right, we up. Shalom. 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 We want to start off by giving all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh. Yahweh Shai. Hashem. Rakaha Kadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone and peace and blessings to the Akim teaching about the Maya Wa Mouth. That's sincerity and truth. This is Great Millstone, Dallas Branch. And uh, the Lord allowed us to, uh, another opportunity to get together today to continue uh, in the book of Hebrews. Uh, we have reached chapter 11. Um, going into uh, the book of Hebrews, well, uh, chapter 11. Now, this is a very powerful, very, very, very inspirational chapter. You know what I'm saying? The Lord knew what he was doing when he put this as documented information for us, you know? So, uh, y'all brothers got anything y'all want to say before we get started? You have the floor. God, God, God. Yeah, I just want to say when he read when he read this book right here, it's going into the account of um, a lot of our fathers and how when you look at how they prospered in certain situations and they became, um, they persevered, you know, when those victories that took place, they believed the victory was going to happen and it happened as such. And when you think of this chapter, when you read this chapter, and when you when you think of it, it's ultimately going into, you know what I'm saying, uh, walk by faith and not by sight. And that's what the whole chapter is going into. And it's going into those individuals of our fathers that did that, seeing the vision of far off. Like we was talking about it last week, our fathers understood the big picture. That's why they was able to suffer the things that they suffered, starting with our Lord Yahweh Shai, even trickling down to us that believe. They was able to see the big picture and having that foresight, which is faith, that was the moving force to allow them to keep going forward so we can have and attain what we have right now and do the same thing that our fathers are doing. Because it says the kingdom was. Yeah, Salaki Akim, it's ours, but uh, his, his, his stream has been getting cut off on and off. So Salaki, but, you know. Going in with the Hebrews 11, you know, it's just going into faith, man. You know, and how faith is a, is is the key ingredient that the Heavenly Father through His Son, Yahweh Shai, looks for in His men. You know, you got to start going. Kind of, I turned my Wi-Fi off, too. It might just be my Wi-Fi. You know, but I, I was going to finish up saying, just as the kingdom was their main objective, and they looked for a city that was to come, the same thing applies for us. And how much more since we're at the very end. I was going to end it off on there. Kind of, kind of. Hey, so, you know, without further ado, I'll go ahead and read. Uh, this is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. See? So faith is that faith is that substance or the confidence of what we hope for. You see, we have that confidence of the future, and we can see it, you know, with us being, you know, the hopeful elect and us being seers, we see it. The salvation, we see the chariots coming, we see Yahweh Shai cracking the clouds, we see this kingdom falling, we see these things, which gives us that confidence and that assurance of us to continue to endure because we see it. That's that, that's that, that's that faith. And it says it's the evidence of things not seen. You see, so something that's not seen is the fact of how Yahweh Shai, what is he doing? You know, he intercesses for us on the right hand side of the father you know he he he, he sends our prayers you know he, with him being an intercessor we necessarily can't see that you see but we understand and know that these things are taking place in the spiritual realm you know that our sins are being are being uh, forgiven by Yahweh Shai, that our prayers are being offered up before him as a, as a, as the instance these are things that we can't see but it's the evidence of these things taking place you know what I'm saying? Just like you, you see the sun, the moon, the stars, you feel the wind. You see these different things, but at the end of the day, it's an evidence of it, that a creator made these things happen, and, and, and it's, it's creating and showing all for all these things simultaneously at once. And we can't see him, but we know that he's there. I got a quick preset, real fast. You re you real choppy, bro. I'm choppy. Yeah, you real choppy, and I think Shaw is frozen. Okay, he just came back. Ooh, Satan don't want this. Uh, Satan yeah, don't yeah. want this. He don't want this meal to be served up. Okay. 
Okay, okay we got you. Okay. Am I, am I yeah. chopping right now? Can Give I us a test. You? Testing, testing. Testing, can you hear me? Come on. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, am I still chopping? Not at the moment. Okay, come on. I'm just bring, I'm going to pull the precept up. It's the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 24. It says, for we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. Mm -hmm. What a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? You see? So we're ultimately saved. We're ultimately saved by hope. We're saved by the hope and promise of, of what Yahweh Bashan Shai promised for us, man. Just as Esau, Esau has a faith and hope in the Big Bang and, and, and evolution. And that's that's what his faith is. Because when you go to that word substance in the Greek, that word goes into a Greek form of uh, uh in the, in the English, I'd rather say, it goes into hypothesis or like a guess. You see? So our hope is in the fact of, of, of the Lord coming from another of another dimension to save us out of the hands of our enemies. And it sounds far-fetched to the rest of the world that the Lord is going to come back to so-called UFOs to deliver the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans and us scattered amongst the heathen and so-called UFOs to take us up out of this scenario situation and change us so that we can rule in eternity on the planet Earth over the nations. And right. Yahweh shot us on the throne today. And Esau being the so-called white man, his power system falling. That's our hope. That's what we have hope in, and that's what we see, and we proclaim it openly. That's our profession. Right, right. You see? I got that. I got that word evidence here in the Greek. Huh. When you go to the word evidence in the Greek, it's pronounced elengos. And then it says a proof that by which a thing is proved to test it. And then it says conviction. So evidence goes into proof. And then when you read it in the Thayer's, um, the, the Thayer's lexicon, yeah, the Thayer's Greek lexicon, when you go down, it says that by which invisible things are proved. And then it says we are convinced of their reality. And this even makes me think, and it's going to go into it as well. But when you look at when Moses was prophesying, I'm sorry, not who Moses as well, but when Noah was prophesying, he was telling them that there was going to be a flood. He was telling the world it was going to rain. Now, that was something that was completely outside of the norm because rain didn't exist back then. Mm -hmm. The earth was the earth was watered by the dew. So to hear that message for years on top of years, all right, and constantly and constantly preach and be convicted to it, it was made manifest and it happened, man. Noah mm -hmm. saw the big picture and just using him as an example, it goes into those invisible things. You mentioned the chariots, the UFOs, all these things that are to take place. The scriptures talks about it. We believe it. Now it's far off, but we see it because the scriptures goes into it. We have that faith. We ain't blinded. You know? Yep. Like, like the point is that hope, hope, hope is faith relating to the future. You see, and conviction is faith related to the present. You're convicted by the present things that, that keeps you moving forward, but ultimately right. have hope. So like say it again. No, I said right. Oh, okay. So like my bad, but you have a hope is 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 faith related to the future. We have a hope in the things that aren't here yet and the things that haven't happened yet. Because we know what the Lord's word said, that his word doesn't go out void. Everything that the Lord said he's gonna do, he's faithful that promise. The Lord right. is faithful that promise. You see. Yeah. And the, and the things that 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 gives us that conviction and that energy, right? That 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 energy to continue to keep moving with the spirit that convicts us to keep moving forward of the things that's presently happening today. Like we see prophecies taking place about Iran and the Middle East and things of that nature, and we're seeing we see the uh, the sights of the chariots, we're seeing the wars and the rumors of wars, the earthquakes and the diverse places. That convicts us to keep going. That's that's that conviction that keeps you like, okay, we almost there. That's that. That's the proof. You see what I'm right. saying? That's right. that. That's that's that proof that gives us. That's it's that gas to keep it in the morning so we can keep going. That's that faith. Uh, you know what I mean? I got, I got two quick precepts. Huh. If I may, and they're quick. This is Jeremiah 29 and 10. It's, it's 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil, to give you an expected end. And when you go into that hope. That word hope ties the expectation. You expect something to take place. All right. So when you translate that expected and you fill it with hope, giving us that hopeful end. 
And that's that end that we desire. That's the end that the scriptures already prescribed was to take place. We're just waiting on it at the end of the day. But we think about our eggs in this particular basket. I got something for you real quick. Just a thought. Okay. Come on, come on. We, 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 we talking about the end of these things, right? The brother went into hope and faith, not seeing the evidence, right? But the word, the words in the book are the proof because everything that the Lord has said was going to happen is going to happen. So we do see it. We just right. see it through the spirit. Mm -hmm. You see, we, 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 we can look upon each other and see Yahweh Shai. We can look upon these people out in the world and we can see demons. You see? But we are able we are able to see these things through the spirit of the word. You yep. see? First of all, if the Lord not dealing with you, you're not gonna see it. But if you're not reading at all, you're not gonna see it. The people that don't see it are the people that don't do what it takes to see. That's right, that's right. You see? So we see. Oh, I, I, I remember Apostle Elder Tohar saying this years ago. We can see the end. We can see these people getting burnt up. We can see the Lord coming back. We can see it. Why can we see it? Because we've read it time and time and time and time and time and time again. Just like you mentioned earlier, Shaar, Noah was saying that it was going to rain a long time before it actually did. But you best believe, just the way we see something every single day that makes us push harder, you think Noah didn't have that same thing? Right. Noah just had that one dream, and it lasted him hundreds of years. No, 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 no. Noah was showed on a daily basis. Absolutely. Right. To get Absolutely. after. That's, that's why he was out there every day. Noah was out there every day because he saw something every day. That's right. That's right. Hey, you know, it, makes sense, Kwan, it makes me think of where it says, you know, uh, it says he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. You know, mm -hmm. so if you're diligently seeking him, he's going to constantly, not even that he has to neither. You know what I'm saying? But he's merciful and he's, bro, the, the, the most high is bad, man. And he's going to mm -hmm. reward his man with particular things, man, whether it's visions, things that actually happens, certain things some, somebody might say that drives him to move forward. He had to be constantly shown those things, man, to help build his faith up to continue forward because he's the most high is fair, you know? That's bro, right. if, if I may real quick, it's just like how we see, just how we see these missile tests and going off and you know, a, a Russia created the Satan 2 missile, got this ICBM missile test, the hypersonic missiles, as we're seeing these things being made, which boosts our faith. We never know. I'm speaking as a man. Noah could have felt one raindrop one day from the sky. Like, look, felt like, what the, you know what I'm saying? Ah, uh, man. Like, oh, yeah. You know what? You know what? I need to, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> you know? Interesting. Could be. It's funny. <laughs> I thought about that last week, bro. Man. That's I had that random thought last week, man. But I know. If I may, I got this one more precept, yeah, yeah, one more it. quick one. And this is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. It says, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. Mm -hmm. For the things That's what I'm saying. The, thing, the things that are seen, the things that are seen are present, right? Mm -hmm. People want to people want to see, people want to seek for a sign, right? right? Right. But that's what I'm saying. The thing that's not seen is the future. Right. We see the future. You see? You got to show. Oh, I just want to put that out there. Come. It says, it says, uh, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Mm. You know, and, 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 and who is, is the eternal? The ancient of days, Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Even when you go into his name, Yahweh, it means he is, he exists. We believe that just strictly off faith, man. We know that. Just strictly off faith. And like you had brought up the point going into how this word is the affirmation. This word is the actual evidence. He is placed this word here just so we can receive it, man. So we can receive the eternal. We ain't looking for no temporal thing. Hey, that's what the scripture say in James 4, to love not the world. You know, because that's temporal. All right. But we look at things as eternal. We look at things that are immortal. That's why the spirit moves us to cast this world to the side. A lot of us threw away families and such, cast a lot of things off, but we're doing it because we want that eternal life. All right. We want to see the Lord as he is, man. That's right. You want look, we we want to see our parents in righteousness. Right. Right now we can't see that. But we have faith that in the future we will. Mm -hmm. That's what drives us. You see what I'm saying? That's right. You got it. That was it on that precept. 
Okay, I'm going to jump back to Hebrews 11 and read this again. This is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Which letting you know that look, this is what this is what the most high requires of us is to actually have faith in his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. That's that's what this is what obtains a good report inside of the Lord is, is your faith in him. You see, this is what the Lord want. He wants us to hope in him. He wants us to hope in, in salvation. He wants us to hope in the things that the Lord said he's gonna do for us. He wants us to hope and rest in that. Mm -hmm. you see? It says, through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of the Most High, so that things which are seen were, were not made of things which do appear. By faith, Abel offered unto the Most High a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Now check this out. That, so, that, so that would mean that Abel strived for the truth unto death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He died in the truth. Go ahead. It says, by faith, Abel offered a, offered unto the Most High a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, the Most High testifying of his gifts. And by it, and, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Hey, real quick, real quick, too, when you read that, because you brought up the, you know, we all were just going to the example here a little bit, a little bit ago, going into Noah, and how, who who's to say Noah didn't receive particular things while he was prophesying? Because while we while we offer our sacrifice, the Lord shows us particular things. Right. Now, when you read it here, it says the most high testifying of his gifts. That's what that means. That's what that means. Showing him affirmation of his good deeds that he was doing, rewarding him on particular things, showing himself openly that pretty much I'm here for you and I received your sacrifice. Right. That's exactly what that means. You know, like um, like be it the example. All right, when you read it, I believe it's in like Levitic Leviticus 10 or 11 or something. It's in one of those one of those chapters, all right, where it goes into when Moses and Aaron steps, stepped into the tabernacle or in, in the sanctuary, you know, when the sacrifice was received and then a fire came down. You know, the same thing with Abraham in Genesis 15, when Abraham slew that beast and then it caught on fire and such. And I'm just using those as examples, but those are examples of the Lord testifying of those gifts. Clearly showing that he had accepted and received his sacrifice. And as we were using the example with Noah, with what we're doing, how we constantly offer our bodies as a sacrifice, the Most High does particular things to show you that I'm here. I'm here with you. Keep pressing forward. That's the bro, mind of those gifts. I was say, bro, how many times, bro, how many times, you remember, Just I'm just going to use you as an example, show off, going out there on Fridays during the daytime. That food that randomly showed up, God, the God. that be coming out, you know what I'm saying? The Lord yeah. always shows us something. You know what I'm saying, bro? We could be in mid sermon. We could be in mid sermon. It's something that we'll say or walk right by. Right, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> All the time. You know what I'm saying? And even the moments, even the moments when you're not in the spirit and when you're just chilling and you just, you know what I'm saying? Just mm -hmm. you know, doing whatever you're doing. A brother right. send a post. A brother a post up there to snap you back into a slim gym. It's constant. Straight up. Straight you know what up. I'm saying? Go ahead. I got a precept. This is Sarah 36 and 6. It says, show new signs and make other strange wonders. Glorify thy, ha thy hand and thy right arm that they may set forth the wondrous works. You see, so the Most High is going to show new signs and strange wonders to his men who he has chosen all right, to, 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 to bring forth his word. You see, like when you read in Genesis, the fourth chapter about Cain and Abel, it says that what? When, when, when I'll even put it out here and say this, you know, the, the sacrifice that Cain sacrificed unto the Lord, you know, with him sacrificing uh, his first fruits, you know, there, there is grain offerings and there is grain sacrifices of, of, of meal, you know what I mean? But what does is, what is it say? It says that the Heavenly Father had respect unto Abel's sacrifice. You see? Because also, too, when you read down, it says that what? It said, look, if you're doing right, man, the Most High is going to be with you. So ultimately, the, the intent that that Cain had when he made the sacrifice, his mind, his heart wasn't right. I was say Adam taught Adam taught Cain and Abel the same thing. Exactly. Yep. There you, so, exactly. you know what I'm saying? Abel was obedient to his father. Cain was not. Yep. 
That's why he didn't have respect. That's what I said. So that's what I'm saying. It ain't like Abel pulled Abel, or like uh, Adam pulled Abel to the side and was like, "Fuck that nigga Cain." You know what I'm saying? No, 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 no. no, no. He taught his sons the same thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, you I, got got a, I got a precept. Con. This this is First John chapter three verse eleven. It says, "For this is the message that ye had heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain, who was of what wicked one." So like who was of that wicked one and slew his brother and wherefore slew he him and it's given a reason why because his own works were evil mm. and his brother's righteous yes, you know so it's really going into the reason why he slew him Cain had that guilty conscience he had evil works and the most high accepted Abel sacrifice more than Cain's yeah because he was obedient him pretty much Abel was righteous he, he was a righteous man and performed righteous works Yep. Cain, his works weren't righteous, man. So that's why he intended Abel's sacrifice more than Cain's because of Abel's integrity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Abel was obedient. Mm-hmm. Adam sacri- Adam made sacrifices to the Lord. Adam did offerings and all that. Right. He taught yep. he taught Cain and Abel, and when it came time for them to do it, Cain did something else. Mm-hmm. He did what he wanted to do. That's right. That's right. Which make which makes him disobedient. You disobedient. Right. If, if you disobedient to the heavenly Father, he gonna he gonna put it on you. You see, that's right. You got it. Yep. Scripture says obedience is better than sacrifice. You know. That's right. That's a uh, precept. God, just back to Hebrews chapter eleven, verse five. He says, "By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because the Most High had translated him." But before he was translated, Enoch was obedient. Mm-hmm. He was obedient. Everybody that you're going to read about in this chapter, their credit was because of obedience, man. The fur, That's what I'm saying. If you fur the most high, you're going to obey. It says the beginning of the, the wisdom of the most high is fur. Everybody that wasn't afraid of Yahweh, Bashim, Yahweh, Shai, they actually showed and they got judged. You see, so when you see our forefathers and our four uh, foremothers that had their faith and stood their ground, that's the example that we're gonna roll with, man. Mm-hmm. You got it. I got a precept. That's the James chapter 2, verse 20, which we'll come back to this later, but I'll read verse 20 first. It says, But wilt thou know? It says, But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Mm. See. So a lot of people want to say that they got faith, or I got faith in I got faith in God, I got faith in the Lord, I got faith in the most high. The faith is faith that, but their works aren't proving their faith in the Lord, man. Right. If you got faith in the if you got faith in Yahweh, your works that you do in his sight are gonna be backed by what you believe in. You can't That's sit here right. and say that you got faith in Yahweh, <clears throat> but your works are completely contrary. You can't say that you got faith in the Lord, but you eating pork or you smoking cigarettes or you, you know, you 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 agree with homosexuality, whatever the case may be. Mm-hmm. There and there, you got faith in the Lord when your works are contrary. Every man of the Lord that we're about to read here, the reason why their faith is recorded and their obedience is recorded and written down is by their works. Enoch said that it said that Enoch walked with the heavenly Father. It said it said uh, three hundred years after Methuselah was born, he walked with the Lord. What does that mean? He was holding the Heavenly Father's hand, walking with him, skipping in, in the daisies? No, it means that he was walking his conduct of how he was walking to please the Lord. So that his, his conduct to please the Lord so what the most high is he, he, he beamed him up. And he was he just wasn't found by nobody. They were like, where Enoch at? What, what the? And he was just gone. He got translated because his works pleased the Lord so much. And Enoch's story is the story that we're trying to achieve so that we can get translated. <laughs> you know, right. it's of an eye, man. Mm. You know? Hey, when you when you read that there, it says by faith he was translated, man. Yep. By what he was translated? You said what? By what he was translated? By faith. Hmm. Yep. Man. Hmm. He he knew he knew he was gonna be translated, bro. He believed he was gonna be translated, just like Elijah. Hmm. When you read about that in Kings, he went in all those different regions with Elisha before he got translated. He went, he went in uh it was Jericho, and he went in Jordan. He went in those regions, and those sons of the prophets were like to Elisha, hey man, you know, you know 
Elias is going to be translated, right? Makes me think about that. They expected to be saved pretty much. They expected to get beamed up. How much more so when it comes to you? You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Back in Hebrews 11 and 5, read it again. It says, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. And, and it says, and was not found because the Most High Yahweh had translated him. Mm. Obedience. You see what obedience to get you? Yep. That's what I'm saying. He was surrounded by people that was disobedient. And through him being obedient, the Lord took him away from them. Ooh. Yep. You see that? You think about it. Even with Noah, with Noah, when, when the Lord drowned everybody except Noah and his family, everybody was disobedient. People were so disobedient to the Heavenly Father that he saved more animals than people. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. He said, give me two of all the unclean animals, give them two by two, and for the clean animals, give me seven of those. And then as far as people go, it was eight of them. Yep. Let that sink in. Billions right. of people reduced down to eight. Eight. Right. Eight. Man. Eight people out of billions. Yeah, Go they was tripping. They was wicked as hell, man. And that's what I'm saying, bro. I've been finding myself going just, just, in, just in my time, my spare time. I always go back and I read about Noah because the world was so bad. It brought on the first death. We live in the time of the second death. So I'm constantly going back to Noah. It was that bad. It was that bad. It was that bad. Sodom and Gomorrah, it was that bad. You see what I'm saying? All these just 70 AD, it was that bad. And it was prophets that led up to all these different events, man. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to acknowledge that if, if something don't resonate in your spirit with that, you're gonna fry, man. You're gonna fry. Man. I got something. God, Sorry, I got you go back, you go back you up ahead, afterwards to tell them. No, mine's kind of mine. It's not gonna be like long, but go ahead first. You got it. You got wisdom of Solomon? No, I, I want to pull something in Josephus real quick. Okay, I'm gonna read this. I'm gonna read this real quick. This is uh Wisdom of Solomon, chapter four, verse eleven. Uh, I'm actually, I'm going to start at verse 10. It says, he pleased the most high and was beloved of him so that living among sinners, he was translated. Woo. Yea, speedily was he taken away, lest that wickedness should alter his understanding or deceit beguile his soul. Right. I'm going to jump to verse 13 and 14. It says, he being made perfect in a short time, fulfilled a long time, for his soul pleased the Lord. Therefore hasted he to take him away from among the wicked. Man. He pleased the Most High so much, the Most High moved in haste to take him away from the wicked. You know, because if he was going to stay down there, it says it would beguile his soul. And you mentioned the point earlier, Yapazah, going into today, how much more wicked it is right now than back then. This has mm -hmm. to apply to us as well, man. That's why the Lord is showing these signs and these works, and he's testifying of our gifts. Look at COVID for an example. That's the Lord to a degree testifying of our gifts, man. That's the reward for our faith. These plagues that are happening, <laughs> and that's only going to press those that believe to push harder, you know. But we're at the point right now where the Most High has to do something, man, and He is. Yep, bro. The Lord, that that the Lord gave us faith. The Lord gave us faith as a gift, so yep. that we would be able to acknowledge every time He did something to boost our faith more. You that's see. Right. Because you can have um, faith can be built on so many different ways. You know what I'm saying? You pray for more faith, then you end up in a long line. You see what I'm saying? You will pray for more faith, or you you will receive the faith that you pray for, and your faith will be boosted by an event that happens. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? A brother will go through something and share his testimony. That builds your faith. You going through your own walk, your faith is constantly built. You see, yep. you got all these. That's what I'm saying. The the Lord gave us faith so that we would be able to see when He's working. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. And when you see when he's working, he shows you more. And then he shows you more. And then he shows you more to the point of where you're willing to die for this thing. You see? Faith without works is dead. Those works start with belief. And then That's they right. materialize into being ready to die for this thing. Yep. Go ahead. Kai, I got something real quick. And um, yeah, I got some. I got some real quick here. I'm gonna read something in the in the Josephus real quick because we're going into we're going into Enoch and why he was translated and that his works please the Lord because it, does, it doesn't really 
when you read in the scriptures, it doesn't really talk about Enoch a lot. But we understand that this was a man who pleased the Lord to whereas the Lord beamed him up, right? So I'm going to read this real quick because you got to understand that the Adam, you know, Adam had Cain and Abel. All right, that that, that's, that righteous seed line of Seth was on the on the earth as well as that wicked line was on the earth too. See? So I'm going to read this real quick. This is in the uh, Josephus, which, you know, I showed right here. Antiquities of the Jews. Uh, this is going to be chapter two. I'm sorry, excuse me, book one, chapter two, subsection two. It says a paragraph to it, rather say. It says, when Cain had traveled over many countries, he and his wife built a city named Nod, which is a place, which is a place so called, and there settled his abode, where he also, where also he had children. <laughs> However, he did not accept, or excuse me. However, he did not accept of his punishment, in order to amendment, but to increase his wickedness. For he only aimed to procure everything that was for his own bodily pleasure, though it obliged him to be injurious to his neighbors. And that sounds like a particular person, Esau, right? It says he augmented his household substance with much wealth by rapine and violence. He excited his acquaintance to procure pleasures and spoils by robbery. It became a great leader of men into wicked courses. He also introduced a change in that way of simplicity wherein men lived before and was the author of measures and weights. And whereas they lived innocently and, ge and generously while they knew nothing of such arts, he changed the world into cunning craftiness. So you got to keep in mind that as these things and these inventions were beginning to take place, all right, as we're going to read down, Enoch was there. You see, Enoch was there living, and he was living a lifestyle that was righteous inside the Lord in a world full of wickedness. This is before the flood, right? It says, he first of all set boundaries about lands. He built a city and fortified it with walls, and he, comp and he compelled his family to, to come together to it. And called that city Enoch after the name of his eldest son Enoch. So Enoch, there was an Enoch that that was on Cain line, and there was an Enoch that was on the righteous that was on the right. righteous side, right. which was the son of Jared and the father of Methuselah. See, and uh, that was man. Actually, yeah, let me read this last part real quick. I'm gonna jump down real quick. It says, uh, let's see. Uh, here we go. So it says uh, Lamech was also the father of a daughter. Lamech was also the father of a daughter whose name was Namak. And because he was so skillful in matters of divine revelation, <laughs> uh, yeah, divine revelation, right, that he knew he was to be punished for Cain's murder of his brother, he made that known to his wife. So you can just imagine the lifestyle and the things that Cain, excuse me, that Enoch on the right side was seeing, which made him want to please the Lord more. So his faith was like, you know what, man, eventually this way of life, this way of living, he's, Cain going to get paid back for this. This way is going to go down. So he wanted to be, he was the one that was going to be the outsider or the outcast amongst the wicked society to the Lord completely translated him, man, due to his belief and faith in the Lord's word. Which we come in that same stick, and that that's all that I want to bring up. Man. That's right, that's right. But uh, jumping back to Hebrews eleven, verse six, it says, "Actually, I finished up verse five at the end." It says, "But before his translation, he had the testimony that he pleased the Most High, right? But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to the Most High must believe that he is." And that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. See? I would say he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him, man. When you diligently seek in the Lord, that means you 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 turned off the world to do so. You see, yep. and in the process, in the process of you learning what's pleasing to the heavenly father, he rewards you openly. Yep. You see, and us being rewarded openly, spiritually, we'll be spiritually open, uh opened up, you see, to where the people that can't understand these prophecies and the people that can't understand this Bible, they looking at us like it's something wrong with us. Mm -hmm. Like, how did you come to that conclusion? And I say this all the time. When we get on these live streams and we go into the blue letter and we do all these things, we're showing you literally how we found that information right, minus right. the Holy Spirit tapping into us. 
right, right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They want to see, they want to see an angel tap into my pineal gland and say, Here you go, go look at this definition instead of that one. See, that's what they want, right? Which, and, and, and if they don't get that, they're not gonna believe it. Okay, we didn't need all of that. You see what I'm saying? Not only do we say the truth. We show you how we came to that conclusion, and we involve you how about Shem, how Shai, by Shem, Rakahakudash, and we tell you that the combination of this thing is why we're able to say the things that we say and do the things that we do. Yep, you got it. Got, got a precept for you. This is Second Ezra chapter one verse thirty-five, and it reads, "Your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which having heard of Salakia, which not having heard of me, yet shall believe me." To whom I have shown no signs, yet they shall do that I have commanded them. That's what I'm saying, man. And, and and that was the Lord. He was telling he was telling the Israelites that he was talking to that it ain't just y'all. You know what I'm saying? I gotta show you this. I gotta do that. I gotta do this. I got I got sheep out there on my fold that haven't seen a damn thing. Mm -hmm. And they know what it is with me. But I'm gonna sit here and argue with you, though. Right. You know what? You know what? I'm gonna go holler at them other sheep, and I'll be back. There. Yo ass, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much. That's right. That's you got right. it. The beautiful thing, the beautiful thing of how Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, his, his spirit, the Holy Spirit had went into us who were Gentiles uh before. Like literally, when you go into the like Paul even talks about it, he says the Jews require a sign. And it says the Gentiles seek after wisdom. But when you go into how the Lord came unto us who were Israelite foreigners at a point of time. We didn't see those different signs that the Jews required. It says they required a sign. The wisdom was the sign. You said what? The wisdom is the sign. Read it again. That's right. That's right. That's right. It says, your houses will I give to a people that shall come, which not having heard of me, shall yet believe me, to whom I have shown no signs. Yet they shall do that I have commanded them. You see Man. The Lord said, look, if you only if you don't believe in me, fine. But the works that I'm doing, they're coming right. from somewhere. That's right. That's you right. See? So the so the people who gotta see, the people who gotta see, it's gonna be harder for them. Right. You see? Who was that? Was that Thomas? That was mm -hmm. Thomas. Thomas the one that showed up after the fact. Well, I'm gonna have to put my hands, I'm gonna have to be able to poke them holes, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I can't see it. I you know what I'm saying? Right. I can't see it, bro. Straight up. On all that madness. You know, so, but, but that's what I'm saying. And the Lord told him, he said, he said, yeah, you blessed because you was able to touch and see. But the people that don't see me and all that, they still believe. So how much more are they blessed? Right. They didn't have right. to see. You said right. you right. wasn't going to believe unless you saw it. So I had to do that just to prove it to you. Yep. That's right. Go ahead. Right. It says they have seen no prophets. Yet they shall call their sins to remembrance and acknowledge them. And what that means is ultimately, uh, obviously, we see each other. We believe we're the prophets, but we haven't seen Moses split the Red Sea. We haven't seen the spirit of the Lord tapping the Joshua to, to, to make the sun stand still. We haven't seen those things, but we believe the report. You know, hey, it's says we, we also a good report. We believe that report. we all we also have faith in reincarnation. Right. Yep. We saw it, bro. But that's what I'm saying. A nigga don't know that. You see? Our pure minds are being stirred up. What are our minds being stirred up about? Things that we've seen before. Right, right, right. Yep. Okay? That's what I'm saying. We have seen it. We do see it. Mm -hmm. That's why y'all looking at us like we crazy. That's what Bro, that's like, if we, that's like if us three, us three was in the mall, right? Us three, we in the mall. And we see an angel, mall full of people, but we the only ones to see it. Can they tell us we don't see it and we looking at it? <laughs> right. But we but we can tell them that we see it and they can't. Right, right, right. Come on, man. Come on, man. That's right. Hey, it talked okay. about it earlier. It talked about the invisible. Mm -hmm. Goes into seeing the invisible things. That's the evidence. Mm -hmm. The evidence is what's invisible to the world, but made visible to us. Yep. Bro, it's a definition. One of those Greek words, man. One of those Greek words. I want to say it's either mysterious or not, when you go into the word fools. But it goes it goes into things that are not plain to see to normal people. Yeah, mystery. Mm. What's that? It's Mysterion. Pull it. Yeah, uh, pull it. Baba Kashaw. Uh, Got it. 
Whatever person it is. Four person, this is cool. Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah. Don, this Hang is 2nd Ezra 1 and 37. It says, I take to witness the grace of the people to come. But, hey, Paul said, by grace, he has saved. And he's going into us today, the grace of the people that are to come, whose little ones rejoice in gladness. And though they have not seen me with bodily eyes, all right, because remember, it's temporal, temporal things. Mm -hmm. It says, yet in spirit, they believe the things that I say. All right, and that's the ultimate vision, man. And it says, Bro, oh, there is no vision of people perish, man. We Job see said, Job said, even though worms eat this body, I'm going to see my redeemer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, bro. That's what I'm saying, bro. Joe could see, Joe could see the present and the future. <laughs> yep. Right. He could see the present and the future, man. And he spoke on all those things, man. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. That was it. Con, did you want that uh, that precept of mystery? Yeah. Let's get the, pre let's let's get the, the precept, then get the word. Okay. Well, uh, could you pull up uh, Ephesians 1 and 9? I'm using my phone to record. So I All right. Record Ephesians 1 and 9. All right, I got it. Kind. It says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which he had purposed in himself. And when you get that word, mystery. mystery. Yep, it's, it's mysterious. Check this out, audience. Right? Mysterion is the word. Right? It says a hidden thing, secret, mystery, general mysteries, religious secrets, right? Prophecies provided only to the initiated and not ordinary mortals. The initiated is those men being baptized by fire, going through the trials and tribulations, right? Not ordinary mortals. That's right. Because ordinary mortals are not going to be given this charge, right? It says a hidden or secret thing, not obvious to understand it, right? So these people say, if I can't see it, then I ain't going to believe. I got to see it to believe it. Yep. Right? If they don't see it, then they're not going to believe it. But then the scriptures also talk about, you know, waking out of sleep and, 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 and angels blinding men. You see? You see how you said all these things mm -hmm. to come to this conclusion? Right. It's not a mystery. That's what I'm saying. After the case is solved, is it still a mystery? No. It's not. That's what I'm saying. If, if if you convict somebody of murder, they go through trial, they get convicted, and they get sentenced. Is it still a mystery? No, it's no, not. It it's yeah. true. It is what it is. Right? It says a hidden or secret thing, not obvious to understanding, a hidden purpose or counsel, secret will, right? Of men, it says, of the most high, the secret counsels which govern Yahweh in dealing with the righteous which are hidden from ungodly and wicked men, but plain to the godly. Now, if you tell me I don't know what the hell I'm talking about, after I read you that, the conversation is fucking over, okay? Right. right. <laughs> it, just said it. it just said it plain as goddamn day. Yep. So that's why we don't feel the need to argue with you monkeys, man. We believe that we are those spirits, we are those men that the Lord is dealing with to understand these things because prior to this, nobody gave us no answers. Right. Who gave us answers before now? Right. No damn body. Hey, the scripture now, says, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind, man. You know what you I'm know, saying? We, yeah. Be fully persuaded by the faith that the Lord has given us to show us the mysteries that's not been given to everybody. And that's what I'm saying. Being, being, being fully persuaded in your own mind is faith. Yeah. That's what faith is. Being fully persuaded in your own mind that these words in this book are true. Mm -hmm. I'll be right back, y'all. Got it. Got it. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. It says, By faith, Noah, being warned of the most high of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. See, so he was warned of the most high thing that hasn't been seen yet, which one, one thing that the brother uh, uh, Char was going into was the fact of how, you know, rain coming down from the sky, that wasn't seen. Right. See what I'm saying? That wasn't something that was common back in the ancient world for it to be raining, especially the rain that the Heavenly Father brought at that time. But he's he seen it in the vision. Yep. So for those 120 years when Noah was prophesying and building, 
what he was he was he was prophesying that look repent because the lord is getting ready to bring a devastation and destruction that has never been seen before at that right, time right. the flood and we're saying the same message and the same thing today the lord getting ready to rain fire that's going to burn up this place repent and yeah. what do people do the same thing they were doing during the time of Noah, scoffing playing games mocking them until that time came and it was too late but it was by faith. We, we This is ultimately moved by faith. You know, the scripture says that what? Through the terror of the Lord we persuade men. Right. See? Uh, let's see. Did you have anything to continue? No, you got it, bro. Kind of, kind of. Verse 8. It says, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should have to receive for an inheritance, obeyed. And he went out not knowing whether he went. And you can read about that account in Genesis, the 12th chapter, where he had separated from the house of his father, Terah, and Terah died. And that's when Abraham and his household moved on. But right here, what Paul is going into is the simple fact that Abraham didn't even know where the land was. He's never been there before. He literally went on faith. And that's like a clear example. I write of, uh, of um, it was incident on what? Second Corinthians, uh, the 12th chapter, the seventh verse. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we walk by faith, not by sight. Mm -hmm. You know, Abraham literally sojourned off of faith. All right. He didn't have no, he didn't have no GPS. All right. Usually when you traveled, all right, you knew of that land. You had people that were that that were around you that knew where to go to help guide you and such, man. Abraham just went mm -hmm. and he just got there and received the promise afterwards, man. And it says that he did it all faith. When you read about each of these. Each of these um, examples that it gives with our fathers, when you look at it and read it carefully, it's always going into something that they didn't see, but they believed. No one didn't see the rain. Abraham didn't know where he was going and so forth, man. But they strictly went off faith, which shows you that he is a reward to them that diligently seek him. The simple fact of the matter is if you believe that Yahweh is, that he exists, and you're, you're going to have actions that are going to show forth and they're going to follow that, man. They're yep. going to follow if you believe he is. And that's a sacrifice that's pleasing unto the Heavenly Father, man. To just believe. Yep. You got it, Taj. Yep. Hey, and, and Abraham, Abraham was called too. It wasn't he was Abraham called for his work, so was he just called by the by the Heavenly Father just choosing? Because when you read it in Genesis 12 chapter, it says that what he the, the Lord uh called unto Abraham and told him to go into this land. You see. And, this, and, and it wasn't by it wasn't by Abraham's works and his workings of the law. No, he was called, man. Mm -hmm. Just as us by faith, we were called to do this work in this ministry. That's it, right. It wasn't by our works or anything like that. It was by it was by us being called, man. Mm -hmm. You see? That's Verse right. nine. It says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. You see, and, and, and they were heirs of the same promise, that same oath, that same oath that he promised unto Abraham. It was the same oath that he gave unto Isaac. It was the same oath that he gave unto Jacob and his sons. That's right. The same, That's right. The same promise that by faith that, that our forefathers were looking for. Mm -hmm. Abraham wasn't looking for It's actually about to go into it. Verse 10. Uh, hey, I was going to say real quick, too. Mm -hmm. And that shows you that we were there, too, man. Yep. You know? Because it goes into, you know, hey, just as an example, when you read it, we read it earlier in um, the seventh chapter a few weeks back, but pretty much going into when Abraham had offered up those sacrifices unto Melchizedek, it said, you know, Levi wasn't there. It said he was in the loins of Abraham, you know? So when they dwelt in that land, you had Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob said they dwelt in the same tabernacles. We were there too. Because mm -hmm. we were in the loins of our fathers in that time, but we were still there. Shows you it applies to us and not everybody else. Yep. You got it, Todd. Con, quick precept. This is uh John 8 39. It says, uh Yeah, John 8 39 says, They they answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Yahweh Shah said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. And what were the works that Abraham, what was the works that Abraham uh, uh, did? And what were some things that he, he moved by? Abraham moved strictly off of obedience and the faith of what the Lord told him to do. What, even when it sounded crazy. 
you know, with him uh, traveling into the land of Canaan, not knowing where he was going. That was an act of faith and obedience. When he was told to offer up Isaac as a sacrifice, it sounded crazy, but it was an act of obedience because what? Abraham knew that the Most High could raise him up from the dead if he even didn't. Right. That was complete faith, which you're about to get into. But uh, verse 9, it says, By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is the Most High. So he, he completely had it set in his mind of the big picture. Mm -hmm. He clearly he, he was looking for the kingdom, man. Yep. And his walk, his walk clearly showed it. His his level of faith clearly showed it, man. When you read about when you read about Abraham, especially in Romans, Romans mm -hmm. the second chapter and Romans the third chapter, bro, it goes and into, four. And four, it goes into the exceptional faith that our father Abraham had, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was Romans three, three and Romans chapter four. It was those two chapters, God. But it goes into how exceptional. His faith is, and how his seed, his seed, we're going to, we're going to come within the same stead. Yashalama talks about this very often about Abraham, how he was in, he was, he was in, he was in Babylon at first. The spirit of the Lord came to Abraham and visited him, slept with him, and he became heir of the promise. Yep. You know, same thing that applies with the remnant, same thing that applies with Israel, man. All right, starting with the elect. The Lord came to us in a state where we didn't know we were the sons of God. We didn't know who we were, but the Lord supped with us. We read it earlier in 2nd Ezra, the first chapter, how he had came to people that believed because, because they didn't see him with bodily eyes, but they believed. But they believed. Same thing with our father Abraham, man. Mm -hmm. And we are of that seed, man. The same thing is literally happening to us just as it happened to our father Abraham, which means as Abraham had the same goal in his mind, which was the kingdom that was built by the Most High, Mm -hmm. The same thing that applies to us. And I'm going to say this real quick, and you got it. Tom's, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, uh, Yahweh Shai said this. He said, I go and prepare a place for you. Yep, and then, yep. he, uh, then he loosely, loosely paraphrasing. He says um, something something to the to the variation of, I wouldn't have, if this wasn't the case, I wouldn't have told you. Right. you know? We didn't see this city yet, man. We didn't see it. But Yahweh Shai said that, man. And it's signed, sealed, and delivered in his blood. Mm -hmm. So we believe strictly off of that. You got it, brother. No, that's right. You know, like the scripture says, here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's and that city that, that we're seeking for ultimately is that heavenly Jerusalem. All right. The new the, the, the new temple. All right. The elect, the governing body of the house of David underneath the Hawash being established on the planet Earth. That's the kingdom. That's right. And, and Abraham seen that. That's why it says he looked for a foundation whose builder and maker was the most high, not man. But who, right. This is something that the most high is going to build, which is going to be far exceeded in what anything has anybody else ever seen. Man. Mm -hmm. That's right, brother. Verse 11, it says, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. So, hey, real quick, it tied Sarah's faith and her strength together. Mm -hmm. Without the faith, she wouldn't have had the strength to receive seed. If Sarah didn't have faith, she would have just thought, man, this ain't going to never happen, man. And that shows you how powerful faith is because you can have something set in your mind and you're so determined in the spirit and you believe it so wholeheartedly, you become convicted. You become convicted and it happens, man. And we got plenty of testimonies within ourselves, within our walks, as we should join here. All right. Hey, man, um, it's written up in the book of Nehemiah. I believe it's in the eighth chapter. It says that it says the joy of the Lord is your strength. You keep the joy in the Lord. You have strength. You have that strength and you believe you gonna have that faith. And that's where the miracles happen. That's where the things start. That's where the unordinary becomes ordinary. You know, it takes that strength, man. Right. Uh, precept Genesis 8 and 14. It says, and I'm just gonna get to the point. Is anything too hard for your home? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. You see, so like like the Lord said, is anything too hard for your home? There's nothing that's too hard for the Lord to make something happen. You gotta remember Abraham and Sarah were old. You know, Abraham was damn near a hundred years old, you know. Sarah was way past the time of age where, where she was she to have was children. 99. 
you know, 90, something like that. Yeah. You know, she was way past the age of her for, for childbearing. You know, but through that faith that she had, you know, she laughed in the beginning, like, how, you know, how am I going to, you know, how am I going to receive a child in, in my old age? But she believed, right. you know, she, right. even though she laughed, she believed. And the scripture is talking about how if you have the faith of a mustard seed, you can move a mountain. Right, bro. See? Like, that's a, that's a very big deal, man. You know, and um, Kevin Samuels goes into it a lot, you know, but it's whenever he mentioned this, I always think about this account going into what's called geriatric pregnancy. And when you go into geriatric pregnancy, that's pretty much the danger zone for a woman to have children. And geriatric pregnancy hits at 35 years old. Now, granted, back around this time, things were a little more pure. So it, it was probably more common for a woman to have, have children later on. Even though women did have a certain mentality about themselves back then, and they knew that they had to start producing early. Mm -hmm. But when you go into the age Sarah was, she was way past geriatric pregnancy at that time man mm -hmm. she far exceeded it man it shows you how far the heavenly father will take you man if you just believe right. he can he can he can over exceed even the expectations that you have set he can over exceed them by a long shot bro yep. say no weapon formed against us shall prosper when we live in a world that's filled with weapons that's gonna prosper like a mug on anybody they don't believe that's so, right man look what we up against and what we coming up, the, the what's coming down the pipe, it is what it is. But that's what I'm saying. We believe that we'll be delivered. You see? Right. The, right. Lord, the Lord has constant. The, the Lord ain't never lied. <laughs> the Lord ain't never lied. We the ones that's out of pocket. So it's, it, it will behoove us to believe these things and cleave under these things to show your works, man. See, mm -hmm. the more the more faith that you show, the more you exercise that gift, the better off you're gonna be. Yep. I'm saying, I'm saying, what they, Paul said, what if, what if they don't believe that UFOs gonna come deliver us? What if they don't believe that? So mm -hmm. right. it is what it is. The Bible said that that's what's gonna happen. Right. You got right. it. Yeah, kind of, I was gonna I was gonna make a point here and mention uh well just rec not recommendation, but I was gonna add since uh since there's about 40 verses in this chapter. Y'all want to read to about verse 20 and do a part two? Oh, yeah. That's what's I'm definitely 20. down. So be like, be like 58 minutes in. Yeah, we can do that. Okay, come well, I'll continue. We're on verse uh, 12 right now. Because I just know with all these points, there's so much edification. And going yeah. into the history, it's just, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. All right, verse 12. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12. It says, therefore, I'll read verse 11 again. It says, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. And was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore, sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. Talking about their age, you know, because they was yep. bro, Abraham, 100, Sarah, 99, or uh, mm -hmm. in her 90s, way past the age, according to man's wisdom, way past the age of having a child, according right. to your body, right? That's what I'm saying. Now, if that, if that was to happen today, they would call it a medical marvel yeah, instead yeah, of saying yeah. it was an act of God. Right. 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 You know? <laughs> exactly. Go ahead. God, it says, therefore sprang there even of one, excuse me, therefore sprang there even of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky and multitude, and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Mm -hmm. That's heavy, man. So you at that age, way past the age of childbearing for, for both you as a man and you as a woman, and through this seed, that blessing that, that was promised to Abraham, like, look, I'm going to bless you, whereas your seed going to be as numerable as the stars of the sky and the sands of the sea. And Abraham, a matter of fact, I'm going to pull this real quick in Romans, the fourth chapter, real fast. Romans chapter four, verse, uh, Romans chapter four. I'm going to start at verse 19, but the point is in verse 20. It says, and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he didn't consider, he didn't consider or think about, oh man, I'm too old to have a child. Or I, you know, my, man, my wife ain't going to be able to have no child with her being so old. He didn't consider none of that. So he wasn't weak in faith. So he didn't consider any, any of that. But check this out. Verse 20 is a point. He staggered, right? He didn't waver. He staggered not at the promise of Yahweh through unbelief. 
but was strong in faith, giving That's what I'm saying. To the most high. He said, he said, he said, he said, I know I'm past the age. I know my wife past the age, but the Lord promised me he was going to give it to me. Nothing else matters. Yep. If you, if, 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 if Noah, I mean, uh, if, if, if Abraham was 200 years old and, and, and Sarah was in her 190s and the Lord made that same promise, he would have ate it. You know what? If the Lord say it's going to happen, it's going to happen. And that's the God to show, man. You know what I'm yep. saying? People are, trying, people are trying to talk you out of your faith. Right. People are trying to talk you out of your faith, but they they believe in something, but they're trying to talk you out of your beliefs, and we can't allow them to do that, man. You see, because our power constantly delivers, man. His word has never come back to him void. But you get a promise from a person in the world, you're not guaranteed to get that promise. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Check this out, verse twenty one, and being fully persuaded that when he had when he had promised, he was able also to perform. That's what I'm saying. He was fully persuaded that whatever the Lord said he gonna do, he able to do it. Yep. He hadn't been showed. He hadn't been showed nothing otherwise. Ever since the Lord started dealing with Abraham, Abraham knew, and he acknowledged that power. Right. Yep. Right. And it was and it was counted unto him as righteousness because he wasn't even circumcised at the time when the Lord came and started dealing with him. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, so he, 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 he was fully persuaded. These people got a lot of explaining to do. Yeah, these people got a lot of explaining to do, man. You can't say if you think that you're gonna use the Bible to explain away my faith and y'all's faith. Shit, I guess we just gonna have. To, I guess we gonna have to get in the ring and paint that parking lot because we gonna fight over that. You know, what I'm saying? right? <laughs> them, them fighting words. You gonna tell me that my Lord that promised me that He was gonna deliver me and my brothers and my family, and He promised us that we were gonna be delivered, and you gonna tell me He not? Okay, yeah. All right, nigga. Go ahead, bro. Right. Con. This is a Hebrews chapter 11, verse 13. It says, these, these all died in faith, not having received the promises. That's what I'm saying. Strive for the truth unto death. They hadn't received that promise yet, but they died believing that it was coming. Mm -hmm. Because it is. They weren't wrong for believing that until they died. You know what I'm saying? They understood that they're going to have to come back to get it. Period. Point blank. Go ahead. It says not having received the promises, because the promise was that we would be we would be as numerable as the sands of the sea and the stars of, uh, and the stars of heaven. Which that 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 initial promise to Abraham hasn't been fully it hasn't fully happened yet because that's going to really happen in the kingdom. Right. It says that we were going to possess the gates of our enemies. That hasn't happened yet. So Abraham is still waiting on that promise to take place. Right. See? And he knows it's coming. Yeah, he knows wherever he may be. Exactly. Wherever he may be. Yep. It says, uh, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them. Seeing them afar off. That's what I'm saying. He seen future prophecy and was persuaded that it was going to come to pass someday. You see? Now you fast forward all the way up to now. Look how much has happened since Abraham was given that promise to now. Mm -hmm. We at the end of this thing, man. You see, I want to say the Lord ain't sitting up worrying about his plans and if they're going to come from, from to come. Bro, we've been, according to the Lord's time, this been going on for about two weeks. Mm -hmm. The history of the world is about two weeks in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. So it's, so it's, so, it's, so, it's, so, so you best believe that patience is a virtue. <laughs> Matter of right. fact, get that. Get that in Peter. Get that in 2 Peter 3 real quick. What? The, uh, one, yeah, one one day to the Lord is a thousand years for us. Oh, I got you. Okay. This is all I want to say. It's around verse eight. Yeah, I got Second it. Peter three and eight. This is Second Peter chapter three, verse eight. It says, "But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing." But beloved, who is beloved? The house of David, the people who are patiently waiting, right? But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing. I know it seems like it's taking forever. I know you want to hear it, but get out of here. I know you tired. I know you broken down. I get it. But the Lord right on time, whether you believe it or not. Go ahead. That one day, it says that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. Think about that, bro. A thousand years, a thousand years down here is one day to the Heavenly Father. Black people, so-called black people, die at what, 52, 54? Mm -hmm. 
with that logic and that thought process, you will never think you're going to see the Lord. Yep. But that's what I'm saying. So, 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 so does that make the Lord's word void just because you feel you too old? No, it don't. It yep. don't. And our forefathers and our foremothers knew that. That's why they have this report that's documented in Hebrews 11 because they weren't worried about all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. Abraham didn't say, but Lord, I'm 99. I'm well past the age of bearing a child like the Lord don't know that. Right. You gonna say, well, Lord, you know, I'm 99. You know, I, you know they, they stay down here. You gotta have them while you're young. Shut up. You know, Abraham didn't say that. He said, okay. <laughs> mm -hmm. The Lord told him what it was. He said, okay. Yep. You got it. Kind of. Uh, he was eleven thirteen. It says these all died in faith, not having not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. That's what I'm saying, man. They got in line with what the heavenly Father was doing, even though they had lives to live and things to do. And I, they did those things. They just put the Lord first. Yep. We put the Lord first here. That was said that people want to get mad because we put the Lord first. No, 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 no. Well, what about your family? Well, what about the? That's what I'm saying. The family that I love so much, the Lord gave them to me as a gift of obedience. I will be a fool to not work to keep it. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking crazy, cut. If, if I'm talking crazy, cut it off. Are you kidding me? Like, no. That's what, if I want to save my family, I have to do the work. I'm fine with that. I have zero problems with that. So, 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 and as, as messed up as this world is, all I got to do is read and study and teach to get my family up out of here. Deal. Sign me up. Right. Go ahead. Yep. Because one, the point that the point that I want to make is that Yahweh Shai told the wicked scribes and Pharisees in John the 8th chapter, he said, Look, your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. Do you not think that Abraham didn't see the prophecy of Yahweh Shai coming on the scene? Right. He's seen that. He knew uh, that in his yep. loins that the Messiah, Yahweh Shai, would come on the scene. He knew that. And he knows that through Yahweh Shai coming on the scene and his kingdom being established, is that that's how the, that's how the all the all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. Like, Bro, like Abraham, Abraham was a direct descendant of Adam. Yep. It had to come somewhere, even though even though Ter, uh, even though Terah had fell off. And was an idol worshiper in Ur of the Chaldees. You see, he was still in that line. Right. Still in that line. So you best believe that he was seeing those things, man. Visions or dreams or however the Lord came to him, man. It was documented. Yeah, Go ahead. This is going into Abraham, Genesis 27. Now, therefore, restore this man his wife. And this is going into the account when Pharaoh had took his wife thinking it was his sister. Mm -hmm. It says, for he is a prophet, mm. and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt live, and if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. But the point why I brought that up, because Abraham, it, it's saying he was a prophet right here, bro. Yep. You know what I'm saying? A prophet is what a seer. So definitely, without a doubt, he saw the things that are far off, just like we do, because we are the prophets, like our father Abraham. Woo! Beautiful mm. point. Yep. I got it. Kind of Hebrews chapter eleven, verse fourteen. It says, "For they that uh, for they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country." See, so if you declare that you a pilgrim and a stranger on the planet Earth, obviously you will only say that if you're seeking a home place. A, so, a, a sojourner is somebody that doesn't stay in one area and, and call that home. A sojourner is somebody oh. that's constantly on the move, just like us. Bro, think about that. We was always moving. That's what I'm saying. All the places we moved around to since we got kicked out of homeland, out of our homeland, we have home yet. You see, the, you, you dwell in an area, you be like, nah, this ain't it. You, you move on, you dwell in another area, nah, this ain't it. And for whatever reason that it ain't it, the Lord haven't put us there. You see, we got kicked yep. out of the whole, we got kicked out of the holy land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We got kicked out of the holy land and we haven't been right ever since. It's a part of the curse. It said you you won't see it again until a certain time. 
So all this moving, we've been, that was a, before we was given the Holy Land, we was always moving. Then we was given the Holy Land and we fucked it up. We got kicked out of the Holy Land. We've been moving ever since. That's what I'm saying. After, after Yahweh sends Yahweh shot back to redeem the elect and to cleanse the nation, we're not going to be roaming no more. Yep. We're going to be able to go wherever we want to because everything is ours. It said the earth was made for our sakes. How is it that the earth was made for our sakes, but we can't cross the border? We can't legit? Right. You see what I'm saying? So our, our, our foremothers and our forefathers understood that. Mm. You see, we gonna eventually get back to our homeland. We ain't there yet because we still gotta repent. We still gotta work our way back and all these different things, man. We said that a couple weeks ago out on the highway. By the way, don't nobody want to repent, bro. Don't know the, the, the reason why a person will tell you you can't judge me. Don't judge me is because they don't want to repent. Right, 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 right. That's why. That's why. If you rebuke them and tell them they, they gotta stop doing what they're doing. That's gonna make them uncomfortable. Go ahead. Gun. Yep. It's just like you moving from hot, you moving off of, uh, from 75, but off the highway 30. It's not you. It, that still proves that you were sojourning because your lease is up. You were sojourning straight, dwelling in a country that ain't yours. So you're moving around still. Yep. Right. Verse 15, it says, and truly, if they had been, it says, and truly, if they had been mindful of that country from which they came out. They might have had opportunity to have returned. See, so if they, if the country they came out was the Ur of the Chaldees, for example, with Abraham. So if that was a country that they think that that, that they thought that was home, they had they could have easily went back, but they seen something else. They right. seen the vision of far off, right? Verse sixteen. But now they, but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly. Wherefore the Most High is not ashamed to be called their power. For he hath prepared for them a city. And yeah. apply this to you. Apply mm -hmm. this to you. The heavenly father finds you, he can find you worthy to be one of his just because you've forsaken America. You've forsaken the UK. You've forsaken the world. You could easily go back to it. Excuse my friends, but we live in this motherfucker. We live here. We're around wickedness. We can easily go back to those things that we that we like to do in the world, man. So for us sacrificing that and cutting that off and mortifying that member that's been part of us for so long, that's Ooh. a sacrifice that's acceptable for the, for, the, for the Heavenly Father. And it's a it's a delightful thing for him to place you in that city that he's building, man. That's right. Yep. That's right. Verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried... Offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises offered up his only begotten son. Of whom hey. it was, yeah, it, get, it get, lady, get down, brother, get down. <laughs> to, uh, woo, go. <laughs> my man, kind, kind. But when you go into that only begotten son, that's a clear sign that shows you, all right, that through the spirit, this is the hollow side, bro. Right, all right. If you go on the blue letter and type in only begotten son, it's only gonna, it's only gonna be pertaining to two people. Isaac and Yahweh Shai, man. Because when you go into it, Abraham already had a son. He had Ishmael. And then afterwards, he had children by Kator, Midian, and different ones as well. But when you go into this, it's showing you that this particular son was highly esteemed and favored, man. That's what mm -hmm. only begotten means, especially when you go into it in the ancient world. That was a child that the, the, the bulk of the inheritance was going to be given to. You know? It shows you, too, that there was a plan. There was a plan that was made with this child right here, man. So when you read the next verse, the Lord, you know what I'm saying? With that plan already being, being established, that could have potentially got cut off. But, you know, we can we can read it. And it's that way you see exactly what I mean when I say that. Come, because when you go into it, just, just imagine, put yourself in Abraham's shoes. Just imagine, here it is. You got, you got a children by uh, Hagar which is Ishmael, and you think that that's the child that's going to be the heir of the promise. Mm -hmm. And the Lord tells you, nah, it's going to, you're going to have another son with Sarah. Sarah old, you don't think that she's going to, that, you know, she old, but you believe, but you're like, dang, well, I'm going to have another child, I'm going to have another son? You have the that's son. Right. Time passes by, and the only begotten son through this child underneath you and Sarah, Isaac, now the Lord tells you to sacrifice him. And and this, but the Lord told you before the beforehand 
that the promise is going to go through him. Right? So check this out. So you got to put your mind in, in, in Abraham's mind as if you in his shoes, right? So it says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises, which that's talking about Isaac, offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, right, that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Right. And that, that's a cut to a lot of these Christians that love to talk about Abraham, which we could talk about Abraham all day, you know, but if you don't have understanding, you would think it just stops there. But it says, and Isaac shall thy seed be called. Now, did it just stop with Isaac? Earlier in the chapter, it said he dwelt in tabernacles with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, man. Yeah. You know, so it's clearly showing you that this applies to the Israelites. Okay. Mm -hmm. First one. Real, thank you. Real, real quick point. We talked about we, we we harped on in this lesson. We harped on how Abraham just said, "Okay, if that's what the Lord said He's gonna do, I, I have no idea how this is gonna work." But the Lord said it's gonna work, so I'm just gonna do my Dang. oh, bro, him. He was about to smoke Isaac, right? He was about, he was about to smoke Isaac just because the Lord said, "I'm gonna give you an innumerable seed." So yep. his mind, okay. I know he promised me a son. I know he promised this. I know he. Now he's asking me to sacrifice him. So he immediately, okay. Well, this is the time for me to level up because everything that the Lord has told me. That's what I'm saying. He didn't hesitate. Right. He didn't hesitate. You know what I'm saying? I guess. I guess. I guess the Lord gonna give me another son if He want me to kill this one. Straight up. Straight up. And when the and when the Lord seen the level of his conviction, he said, "You know what? That's what's up. That's what's up." And a, and another and another animal came out of the woodwork, just mm -hmm. sacrificing his place. Right. You got to be able to wrap your mind around that through the spirit, man. And if you don't, That's right. But it, it, it like I said, it's like all three of us are in the mall and we see Leviathan in there, but don't nobody else see him but us three. <laughs> the elephant in the room, right? <laughs> right. We the only one. We the only ones to see it. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey, if I may say real quick, it's about to go into it. Abraham's faith was on such a level that even though the Lord told him to kill Isaac, what Abraham had in his mind was like, you know what? When I do this, the Lord is going to bring him rising from the dead anyway. There you go. Because he told he told Abraham that through his son, through Isaac, that's who the seed was going to continue through. He told him that. So with Abraham, with Abraham knowing that, the Heavenly Father telling him that, Abraham was about to sacrifice Isaac with the faith and intention of believing that he was going to be raised from the dead. Yeah, it says it in verse 19. Yeah, it says it. Let's get it. Verse nine, I'll read verse 18 again. It says, of whom it was said that you got it, God. God. Say it again. I say you got a shahar. He gonna oh, break. Like, okay, Khan says of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So that was the promise. And Isaac was the seed gonna be called through his loins, through Isaac, right? Accounting that the Most High was able to raise him up, even from the dead, <laughs> from whence also he received him in a figure. Bro, so it says literally he had it said in his mind. That he was going to be raised from the dead anyway, man. Uh, and when you go into that word accounting, I forgot what that word. Well, you know, there's a particular word that's there in the Greek. It's to and consider. when you read it down in the Thayer's lexicon, mm -hmm. matter of fact, yeah, come, come. God, that's that's the spirit because I looked this up yesterday. It's what's crazy is the fact. I was going to say this before. What's crazy is when you posted this in the in our in our chat. I was uh -huh. reading this yesterday, and I posted the same the same thing you posted. I sent it to you. I was like, man, this is the spirit. How this is going into your hollow shot. God, God, that's the that's spirit. <laughs> yeah, when you read 17, 18, and 19, these are clear signs to show you this is your hollow shot in the reincarnation, man. Yep. But if you go down to the Thayer's lexicon, Zaquan, it'll, it'll, as a matter of fact, I think you might have passed it actually. It's, it's actually, it was a little subsection. Uh, Let's see here. No, I'm, uh, hold on, hold on. No, I'm sorry. Go down. Bubba Kasha. All right. Let's see here. There's an easy way to find it in Thera's Greek lexicon. If you scroll all the way down. Because I'm used to doing it on my uh, my, my phone. I, I know I know where you want to go. 
I, I do this all the time. Yeah, scroll all the way down. It'll, it'll give you the actual verses. And then go to uh, Hebrews 11. And then uh, it'll show you the, Hebrews 11 and 19. There you go. And then kind of scroll up a little bit. Just a little bit. There you go. Right there. That's Let's the point of what it is there. We talk about this is by reckoning of all the reasons to gather in fur. It says to consider, take kind of way, meditate. To meditate on. Yeah. Wait, well, there's consider. another one. There's another one, and it says, and I got it written down. Oh, okay. It says to deal with reality. When it says, like when you read this here, it says accounting that the most high was able to raise him up. When you deal with that word accounting there, one of the definitions says to deal with reality. Oh, Meaning okay. that he already had a set in his mind, and it was already a reality that he was going to be raised from the dead mm, completely. Gotcha. And it's spiritual how you look at that because even though it didn't happen as the way Abraham expected it to happen at that moment, like you mentioned, you got the Zach, there was a there was a there was a there was a lamb that was there, a goat that was there, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, to be the sacrifice instead. But even later on down the line. With the promised seed, the chosen seed out of that seed being Yahweh Shai, right? He died and was rose from the dead, bro. So Abraham's expectation was so high because we read it earlier, even going into Sarah, it says by you know it says um through faith she had strength to receive seed. So that strength is key, and he was so convicted in his mind, he had so much strength toward this particular idea. Later on down the line, it still happened that way. Bro, it can you that I, way, man. I, think about that, bro. Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah was both old, but they both believed. So you can only imagine that encounter when the Lord, when when Isaac was conceived. Right. They was actually they was going they was going into that sexual encounter, believing that the Lord was going to deliver them was going to bring them a son. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So the fervency, bro, you I can only imagine how hot they was that night. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Lord, and, and, and it's the same, it's the same thing with Mary and Joseph. It's the same thing with not saying that they are Mary and Joseph, but that's what I'm saying. Mary and right. Joseph, the angel had went to both of them and said, Go ahead and do that because a king is gonna come out of you. Hey Elder, can I make a quick point based Come. on what you said? Even when you mentioned Mary and Joseph, it's kind of it's kind of spiritual how the fact even when Mary was told that before she conceived seed and Luke, she questioned was like, how am I gonna conceive seed if I haven't even known nobody? You see? Very, 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 very similar. That's very that's, that's very way. interesting, bro. And I never thought of that until right now. Just <laughs> <laughs> very yeah, weird, very similar. similar. But that's what I'm saying. But but you see how the Lord makes miracles out of extreme circumstances, right? Constantly, constantly. Yep. You see, go ahead. Done. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull this precept out real quick. Romans chapter four. I'm gonna start at verse sixty. Man, you know what? I'm gonna make an account to read this whole chapter today. Romans chapter four, verse sixteen, and I'm gonna read verse sixteen and verse seventeen. It says. Therefore, it is a therefore it is a faith that it might be by grace, right? It says to the end, it says to the end that the promise might be sure to all the seed, right? So it's through the, to the to the end that the promise is going to be sure to all the seed: Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, with the twelve tribes of Israel. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham. Who is the father of us all, as it is written? I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even the most high, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were. You see, so Abraham had that faith and that foresight and that and that knowledge of look, he knew that the Messiah was going to come through his loins. He knew that. And according to the promise that was given unto Abraham is that, like, look, through Isaac, your seed is going to be, that seed is going to be called through Isaac. He knew down the line that the Messiah would come through his loins and through his son's loins, right? So he understood and had that mindset of faith, like, look, even if this is the case, he quickened at the dead, he can raise him up from the dead because his word, his covenant is going to stay. I believe in what the Lord said he was going to do for me. That's I right. believe in that. So even if the Lord told me to kill Isaac, look, the Most High, he gonna he he got the power to raise him from the dead. That's right. 
so that his word can still stand firm. That's that's the faith. That's the faith that the Lord wants us to have. You see, and Yahweh Shai demonstrated that same faith. He knew, look, if I do this, when I do this, the Lord gonna raise me up from the dead. He was and he was telling it before it happened. He said it before it happened that he was gonna raise from the dead. Faith on faith on a million. You see, man. So, uh, and I mean, that's that's verse 20 on Hebrews 11. I know it's like I said, but there's exactly 40 verses. Oh, yeah, 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 that makes that makes sense. You know, and now sense. the next now the next part is going to be going to now it's going to go into in the faith of Isaac is going it's going to go down the line. Into oh, Jacob, yeah. you know, so, um, you know, I, you know, I was going to let you know it was at verse 20, but, you know, you got it. Oh, hey, y'all don't got no, uh, no other precepts. We can go ahead and close. God, I was going to just, if I'm, you know, just a quick point real quick, too. Because we're going into the sacrifice of the son and how that was a miraculous. Uh, and that's, that gave Abraham tons of favor toward the most high because he was willing to sacrifice a child. Hey, you know, it's one four, it's, it's one forty four p.m., y'all. Call how long y'all. I'll make it quick. But uh, pretty much, for those of y'all that might have children, loved ones, relatives, Whatever the case is, man, the Heavenly Father shows a lot of favor that we're willing to put them to the side. Not necessarily saying to cut them off completely, but as Yahweh Shai pretty much said, or Peter said, we are forsaken all these things, which shall we have to return? And he gives you the promise right afterward when you read about it in Matthew, the 19th chapter. So just as Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son Isaac, look at your daily circumstances when it comes to your family and your loved ones and your friends. We're going to receive an abundance, and we have to have that mentality that our father Abraham did and know an assurance of that, that we're going to be taken care of, man, because the promise is coming. Bro, That's think it. about That's that. It. Bro, as, mu as much as Abraham loved Isaac, he put the Lord first, yeah. and Isaac was and Isaac was spared. Straight up. You Straight see? Up. You see? So during that lifetime, yeah. Abraham didn't have to watch Isaac die, and he, he sure didn't have to do it himself. Right, but his but his obedience and his faith spared his son, man. So if you love your family, man, do the work, man. That's at right. The end right. Of, at the end of the day, you don't you don't love your family more than the Lord do. That's right. Mm -hmm. And the proof of and the proof of that is, is that the Lord gave you faith and He gave you the uh the the the, the initiative to do the work. Yep. Mm -hmm. You love your family. That's why He put you in a position to deliver them. That's right. Brother. So right. don't fucking play. That's right. You ain't gonna, yeah, no, don't fucking play. Don't you dare tell me how much you love your mom and you're going to put the Lord on the back burner when he the one gave you that mother you love so much. If you love your father, do the work for him. If you love your babies, do the work for him. If you love yourself, right? do the work, man. At the end of the day, man, we're supposed to give our heart, mighty, body, mind, soul, all that to your how about shit, your how shot. And if you keep on finding reasons to not give it over, he gonna blow your shit up. You see? Yep. Hey, so with that, we want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakahakwadash, double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone, who are very much in the spirit and power of That's Yahweh right. Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakahakwadash. Along with you brothers out there teaching in sincerity and truth. Shalom. Shalom. Shalom.